everyone's Jackal Wolf back in Feed the Beast's Ocean Block with another five minutes. That's how I did it. Now, if you've been following along, you know that we are working our way through the quest book. This episode, though, we're going to step away from that. We're actually going to jump into a creative world because there's been a little bit of a debate on my channel over the best way to multiply uh, things like diamonds in our world. What I mean by that is we are trying to figure out the best way to take things like these diamond clusters. Now, we've been getting these by sluicing gravel in our world, taking some diamond chunks, turning those into diamond clusters. What is the best way to take these and multiply them into as many pieces as possible? If I hit U on an item in our JEI, it brings up a whole bunch of different tabs that use these diamond clusters. Now, the main thing that the diamond clusters are used for is to turn things into diamonds. It's not always easy, but that's generally the output that we're looking for. I've used this one before. It is the tempered glass jar with the high temperature that's using the soul sand uh, as a, a method of uh, you know heating up the jar. That gets us one diamond per uh, cluster, which is a one for one trade off. If we were to build ourselves a crusher, we could take one diamond cluster and get two diamonds out of it. This is a sort of a multi block machine. It's a little bit tough to build, but it's certainly possible in our world. Washing factory gets, gets us uh, something a little bit different with the raw or meat. This is not something that we're really, really looking for in this case, but there are the mechanical squeezer and the squeezer. These ones actually get us the diamond dust. A little bit of work, we can get them back into diamonds again, but we can actually get three out of the mechanical squeezer, two out of the manual squeezer. But again, these are a little bit difficult because we've got to do a couple extra steps. Enrichment chamber, we could get two out of it. Foundry, we can get one gem and six nuggets. So that's about a one and two thirds. The melter actually melts it down into two gems, which is a good method of ore doubling. We could use this in our world, except we need to use blazing blood uh, to have enough temperature to actually melt these diamond clusters. Anything like regular lava is just not going to work uh, to do that. So that's sort of out of our reach. The two that we are focusing on this episode, though, are going to be the pulverizer and the induction smelter. And these, these are the two that the conversation on my channel sort of revolved around. If we look at the JEI just the JEI, it seems to indicate that the induction smelter will take one diamond cluster, gets you one diamond with an additional chance of 50%, whereas the pulverizer will take one diamond cluster, it gets you two diamonds with an additional chance of 50%. So that's really a one and a half versus two and a half output. Where it becomes a little bit less clear is when you induce some catalysts to this. So both of these machines have a catalyst that you can add that will improve or at least change the output that you get from your uh, machine. To get a look at the different catalysts, what we want to do is we want to right click on the machine. So we'll start with the induction smelter. Up here in the top with the tabs, there's the induction smelter catalysts. We'll click on that. The induction smelter actually has four different catalysts. There's the blaze powder, which gets you a primary modifier of 1.25, an auxiliary modifier of 3, an energy modifier of 0.25, and a use chance of 50%. I'm not 100% sure what the primary modifier and the auxiliary modifier are. The energy modifier to me is how much power does your machine burn? And then the use chance is what are the chances of this item being used up in any given process? So for instance, if we were to use a blaze powder, there'd be a 50% chance that it would get used upon use, but my machine would only be using a quarter of the power uh, that I, that the unmodified one would use. So if you're having trouble powering the machine, this actually might be a good way of reducing the, the required power amount. What we really want to do is focus on ones that are going to get us the most output. Now, again, we got blaze powder, we got rich slag, we got cinnabar, and then we've got sand. Looking at the primary and the auxiliary modifier, we got like a 1.75 and a 1.75. We got a 3 and a 3, a 2.5 and a 2.25, and a 1.25 and a 3. So it's been recommended that the cinnabar is the best one. That's what this primary and auxiliary modifier must mean is what are the chances of us getting that extra, you know, couple of uh, diamonds out of each diamond cluster. So 3.0 is going to be a lot better than some of these other numbers that we're seeing. So cinnabar is definitely going to be our best bet for this. As a comparison, we're going to look at the pulverizer. This one also takes a catalyst. 
We're going to open up that catalyst tab. In this case here, there's only two catalysts. There's the basalt powder and then there's a flint. Now the basalt powder gets us a 1.25, a 3, a 0.25 on the energy multiplier, and then a use chance of 50%. Whereas the flint gets us a 1.1, a 1.5, a 1.1 modifier. So that's actually going to take a little bit more uh, of a modifier, but use chance is only 20%. So the chance that it's going to use the flint is very low, but you're not really getting much benefit out of it. Whereas with the basalt, the chance is a little bit higher, but you're also going to gain that added bonus of, you know, requiring very, very little power to power this. One thing to keep in mind though with this basalt powder is that the only way for us to get it is by using basalt shards and the only way to get the basalt shards is by getting some basalt essence and from mystical agriculture and that's like a tier three seed. So that's a little bit of work to get up to that but it does look like it would be very very good if your intention is to use the pulverizer. Now, all of these are going to get you some extra diamonds out of it. And it's really kind of going to be up to you how you want to work it in your world. I've done a little bit of preliminary testing and I do agree with my community. The induction smelter is the best way to go, especially if you are using the cinnabar. One thing to know about the cinnabar though is it does have the 2.5 energy output. So that is really going to require a lot of extra energy uh, in your uh, system. And it's got a very high use chance as well. But the good thing about the Cinnabar, especially when we're talking about diamonds, is that we are getting Cinnabar when we're sluicing our gravel, which is also what we're sluicing to get our diamonds, which is right here with the gold and the diamond mesh. So you can see here that the diamond chunk is a 3% and a 4% drop, whereas the Cinnabar is a 44 and a 49% drop. So we're going to have a ton of Cinnabar compared to the amount of diamonds that we use. So this in and of itself is a good reason to be using the induction smelter. To demonstrate this, what I've got is I've got four induction smelters set up. This is not really a how to build uh, episode, so I'm not going to get into the recipes for these. I am powering them with a creative energy battery. How you power them in your world is really going to make a big difference as well to which one that you can use. Again, the Cinnabar is really going to bump up the power requirements, whereas the uh, Basalt uh, Dust is you know going to really power them down. What I'm going to do is I've got my first two induction smelters. These are going to be just base systems without any resources in them, without any catalysts in them. Then the next two down here are going to be the induction smelter with the Cinnabar Catalyst and then the pulverizer with the Bazal's powder. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is we're gonna go toss 10 in here, 10 in here, 10 in here, and 10 in here. And we're just gonna wait for these all to finish. Now, one thing I can spot right away, this is the induction smelter without using the Cinnabar. You see this, the recipes is going fairly quick. We've already gone through two diamond clusters. The one with the Cinnabar is quite a bit slower. So even though we've already gotten more diamonds with just the one diamond cluster, it is taking a little bit of extra time. Same thing here with the Pulverizer. If we watch how uh, slowly that is going right there, that it's still fairly quick. We're down on six. This Pulverizer down here with the Basalt, this is already done. <laughs> this one is actually burnt down. So one of those multipliers, the energy one must actually in include how fast it goes. So the Pulverizer with the Basalt's powder is definitely a quicker method of going through things. But yeah, we're almost done with the induction smelter here. Getting closer on the pulverizer here. And yeah, like we're still seven diamond clusters left on the induction smelter. So much, much slower when you use the cinnabar. But here we go. We've got 18 diamonds out of this one so far with four diamond clusters used as opposed to 18 total with the full 10. So obviously there is a big difference there. What we're going to do is we're just going to wait for this last one to be done and then we're going to do a final comparison and just kind of see how things stacked up. Okay, so here we go. We are now complete on that induction smelter. We're going to start off at the end here. This was the uncatalyzed, catalyzed, the, the, this was the run without the catalyst. We got the 18 diamond and a little bit of rich slag. So we'll just go throw that down there. Second up is the pulverizer without the catalyst, 28 diamonds. We got a piece of gravel as well. Not super, super uh, interesting, but if you don't have any catalysts available, 
And certainly if you're in a rush, the pulverizer looks like it's going to be the quicker way to go. This did take quite a bit of time uh, with that Cinnabar running through it. But you can see the induction smelter with the Cinnabar, 44 diamonds out of that. And we used, uh, it looks like eight of the Cinnabar. Uh, it did take quite a bit of time to, to run this one through. And then last but not least is the pulverizer with the Bacelles powder, 31 diamonds. That's pretty good. It was super quick, but given in mind how much trouble you'd have to go through to make the Bacelles powder, the, you're really, really burning your time in the front end rather than the back end. So we did end up, end up getting seven gravel out of it compared to the one gravel uh, we had over here. So I, again, it's going to depend on what you have in your, in your world. Maybe you got a reason to build the pulverizer over the induction smelter for something else, but certainly when it comes to the diamonds, the induction smelter does seem to be the best. You certainly get the most out of it. And really the extra amount of time it did take to run it with the Cinnabar wasn't a huge, huge, uh, difference. It's very rare that you're going to be in a super panic for diamond. Uh, you certainly want to maximize them as uh, much as possible, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully you guys got something out of it. Again, it's not a regular episode. This is sort of a special episode as we kind of look at uh, two different types of, I'm going to call them ore doubling, even though diamond is not an ore. And, you know, I think it was pretty definitive. The community was a hundred percent right in suggesting that the uh, induction smelter is a little bit better than the pulverizer, but there's certainly multiple ways out there. And sometimes, you know, you just got to use what you got handy and, you know, you're not super concerned about getting the actual doubling on these things but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video if you did please think about leaving a like and a subscribe you can follow me on twitter at jackal wolf also check out the description below there will be a link to my discord page i would love it if you guys stop by to say hi as well to be a link to my patreon page if you enjoy this channel if you enjoy this content you want to support stop by check it out there are a lot of great perks out there for all of my supporters but that is it I'll see you guys next time. Good.